Okay. All right. So um, zero tolerance. So zero um, in terms. Yeah, I think um, if someone's um, often certain people who have had um, difficult childhoods do have a capacity to accept what's unacceptable, and that's just the way way it is. I mean, my own thing with um, with following teachers of enlightenment and doing the Course in Miracles is the thing of, um, and this is like, I mean, this is from a certain level. I mean, everyone is, uh, if you look at Dr. David R. Hawkins' work, is going up the levels of consciousness. And at each level of consciousness, as you start to do spiritual work, um, you know, the whole world is perceived differently at each level of consciousness. And what's the next right thing to do actually depends on where you are. So, and often, often there is, you know, and it is quite appropriate for some people to take time out to uh, just do spiritual work and just to process out uh, various uh, triggers that they're getting. So taking a time out uh, and uh, often people will go on spiritual retreats or they go off into a mountain for a period or do various things. It's not at always necessary that you need to sort of move country or, or go into a cave or anything. but. But uh, or, or you know it could be spending time, but um, and that's just a thing to just process out any any triggers, and just to sort of reset to a new level of consciousness, so that you can then tune in to intuition as to what's the next right thing to do. Um, my own my own thing, if I can just uh, share my own experience on it, is uh, I'm I'm really into transcending the world. Mm. So, um, but you know. I think, you know, if I was in a, in a situation that was very difficult and I was just unhooking, I might take some time out just to process it. But then my own thing is to come back, you know, like, uh, um, and actually, you know, I'm born, I, I know a lot of people like to live, go out and live in the tree, live with the trees and the squirrels somewhere in, in the middle of them. But, I, you know, I love, um, I love London and my own thing is to transcend, uh, transcend London. So that there's nothing in London that can hook me in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. So, um, so the thing with that is, um, uh, and I also know from spiritual experience that once you are connected to the source, um, actually there is nothing that can hook you in. The truth is, when you're in your source, there is nothing that can take you out. But when you're in your ego, mm. the hooks within the ego <coughs> can take you out. So the, the Course in Miracles lesson is, um, you know, I'm not a victim of the world I see. Uh, or, all my, th you know, all my thoughts are meaningless. Or, you know, like the table is equally as meaningless as the cup, which is equally as meaningless as the light bulb, which is equally as meaningless as whatever it is. Because the only thing that projects meaning out into the world is the ego. So the e to the ego, for a 50 pound note, is Thank you. To the ego, a fifty-pound note is more meaningful than a plastic pen. So, also things you know, like um, I often share because it was one of the biggest bits of transcending that I ever did was actually with my mother because I, I I lived with my mother and it took and I really wanted to transcend my mother. That took me uh, five years of just unhooking. So. And that's a great thing because, you know, you don't want, you know, my mother's facial expressions, my mother's languaging, her vocal tone, the type of words she would use. Um, all of those things, you know, was to make the, render them meaningless so they'd have no effect. Um, actually, I remember, like, you know, uh, Hawkins once talking in a lecture saying that he had lost the startle response. The, what? So the startled response. So even if there was a loud bang, there'd be no reaction. Mm. Um, and you know, and that's when you start to get to the enlightened levels. You know, there, there there is no noise that can pull you out. You know, that gets your ego activated. There's no, no sort of thing that a person can say to you because you haven't got an ego there to get hooked out with with certain things. There's a, there's also no temptation out there. You know, like if you offer someone a chocolate cake. You know, their eyes don't start to light up and, and they run off into their kid, you see. So, you know, it's the, the transit. However, 
On a practical note, um, transcending the inner hooks, you know, certain things take a lot more work than others to transcend, mm -hmm. you know, and especially uh, depending on where you are on your spiritual journey and how much work you've already done and what type of spiritual work you've done. You know, there can be like, it can take a lot of work to actually take out. As I sort of, the way I sort of contextualize hooks is there's an emotional component um, which needs to be felt out or, or processed out through whatever tool. Mm -hmm. And there's also, <coughs> if you like, the, the thought or the form component, you know, which can have various belief systems or images associated with them. Those need to be uh, rendered neutral. <coughs> So, um, so you need to also let, let those go. Um, so some of them can take quite a while. So whether it takes um, weeks or months or even years to do. Um, yeah, so that's the thing I would say. I mean, whatever, what it, you know, also this thing of like having to look normal in the world um, is something that um, is... Um, you know, just just trying to be that which is socially high. Welcome. I'm, I'm, welcome. Welcome. I'm just uh, sit down. I'm just shooting a video, but take a oh, seat. sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, yeah, welcome. Um, you know, this thing of having to look normal so that uh, uh, you're socially you, you socially fit in with the culture. I don't think that's necessary. It's, it's about being true to who you are as opposed to trying to, to look normal in the world and being true to, to the, the ultimate thing. So, you know, like, um, I do a lot of things which are, um, which would seem weird, you know, like I, I sort of live in spiritual groups, you know, so that might seem strange, but, you know, that's true to what I am. And I think there's different levels of consciousness. I mean, you know, if you're... So it's just uh, being true in that sense. So don't, I wouldn't try and, if you're doing lots of spiritual, lots of people are called, I think um, nearly, you know, um, what was it? Yeah, you know, if you're, if you, the thing with, uh, if, you're, if you're going into really dedicated spiritual work, like enlightenment or stuff like that, you can sp spend a lot of intense work on it. And it's often quite common to take periods out or to be welcome, to, welcome, uh, to take periods, uh, welcome, to, <laughs> to take periods out and to, um, welcome, to take periods out uh, and whatever, whatever time you need to take out to do spiritual work is fine in that way. So that's also okay as well. And even if you look strange, uh, that's that's okay. A lot of that is just cancelling beliefs. A lot of this stuff comes up with um, parental programming and societal programming. Like if you become, if you went off um, and did a lot of spiritual work, you probably would hear your mother's voice sort of saying, well that's not acceptable. You know, it's not acceptable to spend lots of time doing spiritual work. You should be doing something more useful. So, uh, one of the things that helped me with, with that is the, the great, you know, there's lots of things that doing spiritual work and increasing your level of consciousness is, what, is probably one of the best things you can do for yourself and the planet, you know. And um, so I, I keep on repeating this thing of Dr. Hugh Len, who, is, uh, a, who, who was a mystic, uh, is a mystic, still alive. So most of you have heard of the guy, Hapanapana. And he had um, a doc, doc, Hoponopono. Dr. Yeah, Hoponopono. Dr. Hugh Len. Dr. Hugh Len. And uh, if you haven't heard of him, he's the guy who, uh, with that, you know, there was a prison in Hawaii, and he basically got the files of everyone in the prison. And he just forgave all the, these violent criminals for what they had done. And the whole prison got well and had to close down the prison. Um, <laughs> And this is just a guy just having the files, like this guy is a, you know, this guy probably axe murdered someone, this guy probably ran over several people on the road, this, you know, so all of this stuff. And he didn't actually go and visit the prisoners, he just had the files, he forgave them. 
and the whole prison got well. You know, like in Tian meditation, they say, you know, they did some research, like something like, I, f I forget, anyway. Tian? Transcendental meditation. So they had like, I don't know, a thousand or two thousand people meditate for about 20 minutes a day in Boston and the violent crime rate went down 43 percent. Wow. Just from people sitting down and meditating for 20 minutes every day. And, and take, so here's the, you know, so your mother might not think it's great just meditating or being in your room forgiving everyone, but it, it, it's of great value to the whole world and, and to oneself. So I, I don't have any sort of qualms, I don't have like a, a, like a sort of a, a voice in my head saying if you do spiritual work or you just spend the whole day meditating, you, you, your life's worthless. I sort of see it the opposite way around. If I spent the whole day meditating, I've probably done, my life's probably more worthwhile than if I spent the whole day just in my head with resentments trying to garden or do something like that. So that's, that's the thing. But um, if you transcend the world, you don't have to, um, uh, eventually, if you choose transcending the world, you don't have to escape the world, you know, because you're just taking out the triggers within you. But at each stage, just do whatever you feel is the right thing for you. Um, was there any questions on, on that? Or do you want to put it off? Yeah?